Number 47. How many moles of isooctane must be burned to produce 100 kilojoules of heat under standard state conditions? Okie dokie. All right, so we're starting enthalpy. What enthalpy is, I see it that there's an H in here, and if I can highlight this, you see how in the word enthalpy there's an H. So I always memorize that because the symbol is always delta H. All right, this triangle, just like we've been seeing with delta T, this is called a delta H. So H for enthalpy. Now, what enthalpy is basically the standard state condition in which you will either release heat energy or absorb, e uh, absorb heat energy per one mole of substance, okay? So in this case, I know that I'm releasing heat because it's a negative. That's all that the negative is. There's really nothing that means that there's negative heat. The negative just means that you're losing heat. How much are you losing? 5,461 kilojoules per mole. Now, if I wrote this out in like, uh, in terms of like an equal sign in, instead of a ratio, I would say that for every one mole of isooctane, which is C8H18, I would release, or this reaction would release 5,461 kilocalories. By putting the negative, I'm saying that it's being released. So 5,461 calories. This is the same thing as what this is going on. Now we want to know how many moles of isooctane are going to be produced from 100 kilojoules of heat. So I just want to take my kilojoules and go to moles. This looks like a conversion to me. Let's see. Write down what they gave you. I want 100 kilojoules, which is kj, right? And I want to go to moles. Well, this information has the link between kilojoules and moles. And it's an equal sign, it's a ratio, so I can just use my dimensional analysis. Times by a ratio, right? Throw the unit that you don't want on the opposite side, so it's going on the bottom. The unit that you want, they said moles, goes on top. And now what's the relationship between moles and kilojoules? Oh, for every one mole, so I'm gonna put one mole, I'm going to release 5,461 kilojoules. Now, if you wanna put the negative, that's fine. But just remember that the negative means it's being released. So you don't really have to put the negative. The number is the thing that is the most important. Now I'm just going to cancel out the kilojoules and let's just do this math. 100 divided by 5461. And it looks like I, I mean, technically there's only one sig fig here. So maybe I'll just put it in one sig fig. Zero point. 0 0.02 moles of isooctane. Isooctane. Now, if you did put the negative in here, technically you would get a negative coming out of it, but this doesn't make any sense. You can never have a negative amount of quantity. So that's also a reason why the negative is just used to say released. There's not actually a negative amount of energy. But that's it, guys. We answer the question. So, how many moles am I going to need in order to produce 100 kilojoules? Only 0.2 moles. That's it. Thank you so much for viewing this video. I really hope this helped. Let me know in the comments. If you want to help us out, please press the subscribe button. That would mean the world to me. Thank you so much for that. And I'll be seeing you in future lessons. Good luck. Keep studying hard. I'll see you later. Bye-bye.